Hi, it's Tim. I'm going to show a small trick you can do with the bounding box in uh, reference geometry, so this one, and how we can utilize it uh, and even extend on what we can do with it using custom tools. So let's start by inserting the bounding box, and this is found under the features toolbar on the reference geometry and bounding box. If you cannot find it there, then it should be under the insert reference geometry and bounding box. Inserting this is going to give you a few different options and we just go for the best fit and show preview that's perfectly fine. And now if I go into my configurations because I already have a, a drawing created for this sheet metal I can just activate my config just to make sure that I have an updated flat pattern uh, configuration in my properties as well. So this should flatten and perfect. So now everything should be in place for the uh, the properties. If I go into my document properties and configuration properties then I have I don't know why I have this one let's delete that. Uh, I have box length width and thickness. The clever thing about this uh, bounding box is it will figure out the logic itself. So length will always be the longest value while thickness is going to be the shortest value. Quite clever. We also have a different set of properties for the default flat pattern and we can see that the thickness is one millimeter and this is accurate for, for this part file. So everything is perfectly fine uh, in the context of this file. Now what can we do with this information? Well we could add a bit of logic to this. So for instance we can calculate area. And for doing this I just want to make an equation. So equation. We want to take the bounding box length, multiply that, multiply that by the width. And this is going to give me a value of 1500 and no 15,330. And we can even do more with this. So I can add plus 20 and throw in a parenthesis. And I can then roll back and say parenthesis start and parenthesis end plus 20 and parenthesis start. And this is going to give us the calculated volume including 20 millimeter offset. So that's 10 millimeters to either side and that would be it. I could even link to a property in, a, in this one and utilize that for, for calculating the area. So this is how you can utilize the bounding box directly from within SolidWorks. Let's introduce custom tools. Let's first go back to the properties and talk about what we're going to do. So we can see that we have a property name called Total Bounding Box Length, Width, Thickness, Volume, etc. These are attributes that we can link to inside of Custom Tools. Knowing that, we can open up our options and we can actually define everything to be working from inside here. In our model properties, we can add attributes by simply typing in total bounding box length and then use whatever you want as a label for that. Makes sense using the same as the attribute in this case. Worth noticing is we want to do this for the all configurations. Other than that we don't need to do anything else from here. We repeat that for length, width and thickness and if you want to you can also include others. Now I have created one called area because I want to calculate not the volume but the area of the, uh, the sheet metal file that we need and also including a bounding box offset. So let's just see how this works first and then discuss how to set it up inside of custom tools. For this configuration if I go into my properties we can see that we are reading in all of the values directly. So here we have the 150, the 102.2, 41.1. 1. 
We also calculate the total bounding box area and we are actually using a bounding box offset. If I were to change this one into something else like 100, you can see that the box area is added up. If I remove it, we are back to the initial value and then I can add the 20 millimeters. But how can we use this in our profile? Let's go and have a look and see. We do not support anything other than text box uh, properties in, uh, in the custom property scope. So in the initial example, I used an equation and we do not support that, but we can do something else. We can go in and create a model combination and use a calculation. Now calculation is a bit different than anything else you have been using and maybe you didn't even know this existed. If you start with a pointy bracket, and then you can use mathematical uh, characters normally, then you can build your logic. So we have here the total bounding box length plus the bounding box offset. And this is again in parentheses. Then we multiply by in the parentheses again, the total bounding box width plus the bounding box offset. So it is that easy to define a calculation using existing values from the bounding box. Going back to my model property scope, I can then use this box area and I can fetch the get combination value of the combination created, the calc. I also included this where we can freely define how much offset we want for, for this. And obviously this could also be driven by a drop down list. Finally, a thing you want to do maybe is to open these ones and make them read only. Because it makes no sense that you can update these. Like so. And there you have it. We have everything defined and you can use either custom tools or you can use equation driven calculations for the bounding box. And everything can obviously be used in drawings and in exports and whatnot. Thank you for watching.